Google announced its intention to buy Motorola in August of 2011. About a year later, they did just that for a whopping $12.5 billion. At the time, there was a lot of speculation as to why Google would want to do that. Was it for the patents? Were they trying to dramatically increase their phone production? Well, two years after that announcement, we're seeing the first tangible product from that marriage, the brand new Moto X. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're taking our first look at the brand new Moto X, the highly customizable new release from Google-owned Motorola. The Moto X is the first smartphone to be assembled in the USA, which allows the phone to be as customizable as it is. Using the Moto Maker webpage during checkout allows you to choose the color for almost every visible part of the phone. And with a boggling selection of colors, there is no shortage of options. The phone itself is similar in size to the Nexus 4, measuring a 129.4 millimeter in length, 65.3 millimeter in width, and a curved back with a maximum thickness of 10.4 millimeters. Wondering about its weight? Well, the Moto X is an exact match to the Galaxy S4, coming in at 130 grams. The Moto X comes with a 4.7-inch AMOLED LCD with a resolution of 720 by 1280 and a pixel density of 313 pixels per inch, just slightly under the iPhone 5, but way below other recent Android devices. That's enough about specs, let's take a look inside. Before we open the Moto X, we noticed a small goof next to the SIM card tray that confirmed the rumors about the issues with build quality. Yay, USA. That held our attention for only a half second as we were eager to take a look inside. Like most Android devices, we were happy to see that the rear panel was held on with clips. Our joyous moment quickly turned to frustration as we noticed that in addition to clips, Google, or Motorola, or Motorugal has added glue. With the help of our eye opener, we got past our first hurdle with the Moto X and made it inside. We were immediately greeted with a not so cool giant adhesive pad and some really cool inductive charging coils. And with the release of a ZIF connector, we are finally inside. Once we got the volume sleep button cable out, we went after the battery. One screw and a sticky charging coil later, we got our first look at the battery. The 3.8 volt 2200 milliamp hour lithium ion battery is claimed to get 24 hours of mixed usage. Many reviewers got between nine and 11 hours of HD video looping. Pretty impressive. We removed the upper mid-frame panel, which housed the speaker, headphone jack, more antennas, and pressure contacts. We love us some pressure contacts. Now, with the help of our handy tweezers, we're able to get the front-facing camera out of the X. This little guy is a 2-megapixel camera that is capable of capturing 1080p video. With that camera out of the way, it was time to take a look at the motherboard. All the goodies were protected by EMI shields, but we made quick work of those and turned our attention to the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro processor. Motorola developed a custom system architecture, which when coupled with eight processor cores, allows for the delegation of processing power. Four graphics processor cores for stunning clarity, two application processor cores for swift action, and two low power cores awaiting your next command. Lastly, we took a look at the rear-facing camera. This little guy is a 10 megapixel camera, which is slightly less than other recent Android phone releases, but it does have a lot of cool additional features, including 1080p HD video, four times digital zoom, slow motion video, burst mode, auto HDR, panorama, and tap focus. It's time to talk repairability. We score every device we tear down for repairability between one and 10. One being the least repairable and 10 being the most repairable. The Motorola Moto X got a seven out of 10. On the plus side, the phone has pressure contacts and cable connectors, making the modular components easy to replace. Another plus was the use of a single type of screw, but the major downside was the sticky adhesive on the back cover, which will slow you down when opening the phone. For the complete teardown, including tons of high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all the latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.